everybody. Who knew? Summer has arrived. It's amazing. It's actually warm and sunny out there. I have not got a cardigan or a jumper on. I have got um, I've got a hoodie. I've got a hoodie on standby, but you know, hey, I've also got some not my jeans. I've got my summer trousers on because I just thought, you know what? I've got to make the most of this. You never know how long it's going to stay, especially here in Cumbria where our, our normal mode of operation is sort of, you know, a bit more grey and a bit more cold and a bit more wet, but we're not going into that now. I'm sorry, I always talk about the weather, it's just sort of, I think it must be a British thing, it's what we do, we sort of go, oh well, you know, have you had a lovely weekend and how was the weather for you? It's what I do when I talk, ring home and talk to my dad, it's just like, well, it's a way of conversing, isn't it? It's a way of setting the scene and saying, well, I care about you and I'm going to talk about the weather. <laughs> so, today, I've got my boxes of fabric ready because it's time to make some samples. I haven't, I've had a couple of days off, I'll be honest, because um, it was the bank holiday and my husband's off. We've just had a very relaxing weekend and I have not been in here for two days really other than to whistle in and out to get a couple of things. Um, and I think that's quite good. I think it's good for me to step away because the thing about when I work, because I work from home and my work is always here and because I'm an artist my work's always in my, you know, potentially always in my head. So um, even when I'm asleep <laughs> I find myself planning things and because I've got an exhibition coming up and I'm starting to think I don't have to just think about what I'm making or what I'm finishing off but also how I'm going to display it, how I'm going to show it. I had a lovely meeting last week. We actually had a face-to-face -face meeting with my group of uh, fellow artists and um, textile artists um, I think I've mentioned we work at Florence Mine, we, we exhibit our work there, which is a lovely um, iron ore mine, iron ore mine, an old iron ore mine I should say. It's a fantastic place, it's still got the old mine head, it's got rusty rusty metal everywhere, it's a fascinating place to go and it's a really nice exhibition place, it's a very low key sort of place, it's not a posh, posh white gallery, it's just a place where men used to work. Um, and get changed to go on their shifts and go down the mine. It's a, it's you know, it's rather different. So anyway, we had this lovely meeting. There was about five of us, and we sat in the sunshine outside and discussed, you know, what we were going to be doing going forward, and how we were going to, you know, set the exhibition up and um, get posters and things out for it. So that was really, really nice. That was like the first meeting I've had with anybody really in months, and it was an absolute joy. And to sit outside was lovely. So today I'm going to get on with some sampling, um, as I said I've been planning and thinking and what I need to do is really probably have a tidy up, it's, if you could see behind the scenes here guys there's just piles of stuff everywhere because I'm always doing a bit of this and a bit of that, and sometimes some of the other. Um, so that's what I'm going to do today, I'm going to just play around with the fabrics, make some little samples up to it so I can match up what I see and what I see going with this, because this is this is Mildred. She's doing she's doing really well. I've nearly got her um, uh, overlaying, if you like, finished. I've got some pins on there. I've still got some stitching to do, but I'm ready to move into the other colour and get this uh, bodice finished. So I will stop talking because I could talk all day and I would get nothing done, and that would be sad, wouldn't it? Thank you again for joining me here. Thank you for subscribing. It really makes all the difference and thank you for your comments and your questions. I really enjoy you know talking to you and being able to help you with um, little problems that you might be having. It's really nice. I feel as though that's a really nice connection with everybody. So thanks again. I will now get on and show you what I'm going to do. Okay so here is the piece of calico I cut last week uh, and pinned onto my, onto my dummy, onto Mildred and I've got the darts here running up like this. What I've done is I've actually cut it in half because I've got I've got two pieces to make which will then join up together when I when I um, work on some lacing or something down the middle bit to join them up. And one side will get tucked in behind the seaweed part of the bodice. So I'm just cutting up some little bits of fabric just to have a look look and see kind of what colours I want to go together. I kind of want to layer up maybe two or three I think. I'm going to have a play with my embellishing machine. Um, I'm not sure whether that's what I want to use. I'm not quite sure how. I kind of want a fairly smooth metallic-y sort of surface 
and I'm not sure how dark to go so what I do is I'm going to play with these little pieces do a bit of embellishing, do a bit of stitching and what I'll do then is I'll also hold it up next to the next to Mildred's bodice as it is with the sort of blues colours and um, we'll kind of take it from there really it's, it's, a, it's a game this, it's totally a game seeing what colours go with each other I think I've got some of that and I like to make several uh, samples so that I can look and say well I really like see I've got this beautiful organza I really like this as a top cover what would I like to put underneath it what will be thick enough how much stitching do I need to do how am I going to work it with the the darts here you know am I going to just stitch a base and then add the fabrics on top in layers uh, so create a shape by stitching up these darts and then that gives me a base to work onto. I don't quite know how it's going to work because it's obviously got to fit on the dummy and it, she's a shaped person as it were, she's got shape to her um, and in the past I usually just make it to fit what I've made the corset wise, I make it just to fit her. So I shall continue to play with these colours, do a bit of embellishing and we'll see where we get to. Right, so this is my embellishing machine here set up. If you haven't seen one of these before, it's like a sewing machine, but it has lots more needles and it doesn't have any threads. And what it does is it pushes one fabric, so a top fabric, it will push through into a bottom fabric and it needle felts things together. It's really, really useful and it's my, it's my right hand girl uh, along with my sewing machine. So I'm just going to have a little play. I'm going to put some fabrics together. Uh, I need a base fabric actually. I'm going to, what, I, what I tend to use, a lot of people have asked me what I use for fabrics and I have to be honest, I use what I've got. So here I've got, I'm going to use some calico as the base. Um, I think what you do is you just use what works. If your machine tells you it's struggling with a fabric then don't use it okay you'll hear it if it's using a fabric that's easy to use and it's happy with you will hear it it will make you know much less of a racket if it starts making a racket then you know it probably doesn't like the fabric if you start breaking needles then it you know obviously doesn't like the fabric or maybe you're doing it when you're stressed you must always be very relaxed around your machines because if you're trying to use them when you're feeling stressed or you're trying to really, you know, pursue getting something done, then I suggest that you stop and go and have a break and come back to it because I have broken needles, but it's usually when I'm trying to push things and be stressed with what I'm doing and trying to get an outcome. If you're trying to get an outcome, that seems to be what happens. So I've got some layers here. I've put some, this is some organza on the top. This is some weird stretchy blobby fabric that I've got. Um, and a bright colour underneath and as I say I'm just popping on the calico because that's what I'm going to have as my base for the bodice so I'm just going to get going and do some embellishing uh, or at least I will if I've got the machine switched on no, do you know what? technological technological wizard, that's me What I love about my embellisher is it's really quick to use. It does an awful lot. It's got 12 needles in here, so it will do it quicker than if you've only got five or seven. And you can see on the back there, what it's done is it's pushed the fabrics through. If you don't like, if you don't like what you've put on, you can just peel it off and start again. It only becomes firmly fixed if you embroider on top of it, okay? So I'm just gonna do this. And you see, this might become something that I will if you embellish it enough, you start to actually allow the second layer to come through because it destroys the top layer. Um, and then what I would do with this is I would then stitch on top and you can add more colours into it. I quite like that, but I'm going to do a few more samples, do some stitching and then we'll do some comparison and uh, see which ones I like best. So this is the little sample that I've just made. I'm not sure if I like it, I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna just try doing some stitching onto it now. And so I'm looking at these lovely colors. I've got lighter colors, I've got darker colors, rich ones. It might be that I'll use a mix. This one's quite nice as well. I'm not sure about that, it's a bit brown, but it could have its place. And uh, that one's definitely too brown I think. I really quite like these colours together, I think that goes quite well and 
I'm just going to do a bit of free machine embroidery onto it and then I'm going to try cutting some holes in it and see what it's, it's all a process of feeling my way into this guys because I haven't got a vision for it I'm just letting things show up for me and I'm going to see where it takes me as per usual but I do love these colours they're really nice and rich again people ask me what kind of threads I use and uh, you'll see I've got different things going on here some of these threads I'll have you know I've had these since I was a student many years ago but I have added into the mix as like with my fabrics I've got a growing it's an ever-growing collection isn't it because you always need a different color um, and these are just polyester I think that's probably polyester as well I don't usually use cotton I just tend to use whatever I've got in I'm not fussy I am not fussy I'm not um I can't think what the word is. I'm not a thread snob at all. I use what I've got. I use what I feel is right. And you've just got to be really careful, these, that you don't iron them. I discovered one day that obviously they melt because they're polyester. And when I was growing up, I always used to use cotton because cotton was the thing. But these have a nice, they have quite a nice luster to them. And I might use some shiny fabrics, some shiny threads on here. I'm not sure. But I just use whatever I've got in, you know. I buy, I buy, try and buy as good quality as I can and um and just use it if it doesn't if it works for you and it doesn't snap or anything then just use what you've got okay so this is my sewing machine set up for free machine embroidery let's put the light on i'm going to put the presser foot down you'll see if you haven't done free machine embroidery you'll see this is a very strange looking foot uh, it's called an embroidery foot or a darning foot and it allows you to have even when it even when it goes down it sort of bounces back up again so you get the opportunity to move the fabric underneath and the machine just does the stitching and you just move the fabric and the stitching will continue you can stop at any time don't worry it's not going to run away with you but you must have your press the foot down and ideally underneath here I've lowered the feed dog tee so there's nothing to snag on my fabric as I'm moving it around I also lower my top tension a little bit I'm just showing you you can't see <laughs> But that's just because that's what I feel my machine likes and I put my stitch length on to zero. So I'm just going to start off with some random stitching because I think what I want is just a random surface added onto the top of what I've got going on. So it won't look like anything very much because it's, I'm using a thread that's quite close in colour to this. So I think what I'm going to do next, actually, thinking about it, um, I'm actually going to cut some holes in here next, I think, and then I will stitch around those with a couple of shades of thread. It's all, um, what is it, this? It's exploring, it's finding out what's going to work, and as I'm going along and as I'm putting um, things together, ideas pop into my head of how I want to do this, okay? I never know absolutely how it's going to be. I just play around and... If you just start, then the ideas can come. But if you if you sit there going, oh, I've got no ideas, I don't know what to do, that's fine. But if you just start playing with the fabrics, I find ideas will come. So as I say, I think we'll just stop there for a minute and I'm just going to cut some holes in this and then stitch around that again. So already I've cut three little holes out. I haven't... I could draw them. I could draw them on the back, but actually... I just decided I would just cut around in a circular shape roughly. So these three little bits have come out, which I quite like. And already I'm thinking I don't really like the way that this calico is showing up. So I think I'll have to find a different base fabric to use. What I do like though is I like the stiffness of it, which is the embellishing combined with some stitching. And my other thing I'm thinking is what I might experiment with is trying maybe putting some maybe some little pops of fabric coming up through those holes or having a second piece of fabric underneath so that you can see um those holes a bit better or i might even cut some circles of fabric and stitch them on top i don't know i'm just playing around um ideas just come once you start as I say, once you start playing with those fabrics, once you start just doing something, it doesn't really matter what you do. Which is why I, I always say, if you just get your box of fabrics out and start fiddling with them, playing with them, then ideas can come. 
and uh, this is how I develop my work really. I have a start point and then actually you know you'll find lots of ideas can come then it's like you, you kind of open the floodgates and sometimes actually you get too many ideas you see I really like those little bits I think they could come in handy for something else if not for this piece so I'm going to do some more stitching around here and I might just stick a couple of bits of fabric in behind to see but I, I quite like the effect of that it's quite metallic it's quite dark and it's quite a simple surface because I think that because I've got a lot going on with the seaweed I'm not sure that I want this to be a very complex surface and I could even take my heat gun to this and burn some of this away a little bit. I'm not seeing much of the background fabric but I guess it's it's part of it I suppose at some level um, but we shall just see how it progresses and I will take you on the journey with me as I do this. So, um, I've got my first little sample here and what I'm going to do next, just before I do a bit more stitching on it, is I just want to bring it over and put it together with what I've got going on here already. And in fact, probably what I need to do is pin, pin that bit down a bit. So I shall just, just pin this edge down a little bit because actually this bright colour on its own is way too bright. It's quite nice knocked back with a bit of, I quite like it with a bit of um, organza over the top, um, but I shall just pin this back a little bit so that we can see just this lovely bronzy colour that I've got going on. I really quite like that. So that's quite nice. Um, as I say, I'll do some more samples, but this is quite good. I think we're moving in the right direction. I quite like the little holes. I don't want it to be too fussy, as I say, on the surface because I've got all of this texture going on on here. In my head, this is like a, a kind of a flat piece of metal, really, that's just been washed up on the beach and it's been turned into the back of the bodice by some magic means. So I think that's enough for one day. I'm going to finish it off here and I think it's lunchtime anyway. I'm going to go and get my lunch next. So thank you so much for watching and I will show you the progress next week. I really need to get on with this thing because uh, the 26th of June, I think, is when the uh, actual exhibition uh, opens and I'll have to be there that week before with everything finished and ready to set up. So I've got to get my skates on a little bit here, but I'm on the, I'm on the way. I've made the start and I'm on the way. So thanks again for watching. I will see you next week. Have a great creative week. Bye for now. Oh, and bye from Mildred. <laughs> she says, goodbye, everybody. See you next week. Thank you.